That was incredible, Atitri. Thank you very much for that. Hello, oh, my everyone. Pleasure. I am Jason2890, and this is Cuphead. Uh, today, we're going to be showcasing the 300% category. And before I get into what all that entails, let me just introduce my co-commentator, uh, Cuphead legend in his own right. We have Sublime joining me. Uh, Sublime, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. I'm Sublime. I speedrun Cuphead, and I've done a lot of different hit list runs for the game, and I'm going to be helping Jason out. Jason is one of the best players in the world, so I'm really excited for everyone to see him do a run that has all of the content, including everything new from the DLC, and to show everyone how the DLC affected the meta for the game and how you can utilize the DLC for the base game. And I hope that you all enjoy the run. Yep, so as Sublime mentioned, the 300% run is basically a completionist category. We're going to complete the base game, uh, the DLC, which just came out last year. We're going to beat all the bosses, collect all the coins, buy all the weapons, charms, etc. We're doing it all on the expert difficulty. Now, uh, normally expert difficulty is locked behind a completed file, uh, but as long as you have a completed file on your uh, on your save files here. Um, you could actually do what's known as the fresh expert glitch to start a new file on expert so you don't have to go through the entire game on a regular and then again on expert uh, for these speedruns. And if you're here to see specifically the DLC content, do not go anywhere. We go through the DLC aisle very early in the run and then use a lot of the DLC items to go through the base game. So even if you're familiar with Cuphead speedruns for the base game, it's going to look quite a bit different uh, since we're going to be seeing a lot of playtime as Miss Chalice. We're going to be using the Cursed Relic. We're going to be using some different weapon combinations. And we'll get into all those details later. Uh, we'll get the run started here in just a moment. I believe we had a donation incentive for character selection. So do we have a result on that, Atitri? I believe so, but I'm going to give it one more check because it is so darn close right now. Yeah, last I checked, it was like 51%. Yes, it is now closed. 569 to 539, player two carries the day. We will be playing as Mugman. Alrighty, Mugman, the cool. true hero of the story, in my opinion, and my personal favorite. So I'm glad you guys voted for Mugman, so you pulled through here. And also, I hope you are all fans of lame puns and dad jokes. So there's going to be plenty of them during this run. We are going to have a wonderful time. Right, Sublime? Oh my goodness. You're already getting started with that, I see. Already yes, I will started. try my and best. And also, uh, yeah, just also, if you have donations to send in, send them in with your best puns, too. Maybe a teacher will be able to read them live on stream. So uh, with yes. that being said, we are going to start the run in five, four, three, two, one, go. Good luck. So the beginning of the run, thank you. Beginning of the run, we're going to go skip a couple of these intro cutscenes uh, because we're trying to go fast here. We are going to talk to Elder Kettle. He's going to go give us a little potion and tell us to get going, blah, blah, blah. We're going to go into the tutorial right here. And uh, we're not going to the tutor tutorial because we don't know how to play the game. We're going to do the tutorial because there is a coin in the tutorial which will... Um, you know, which will be part of the part of the game since we have to go uh, collect all the coins as well. Uh, so once we collect that, we're going back to the world map here. We're going to go and talk to this apple guy over here to get three more coins, and we're going to go into the first of six run and gun levels, Forest Folly, which is coming up in just a moment here. This is a very optimized level. There's so many runs that that get to this point since it's right at the beginning. So the strats for this are very tight. Yep, and here we go. Uh, you'll notice some recurring tech that we use in this run. Uh, with the dashes, there's a little jump that we do after each dash, and that resets the cooldown, allows you to dash again a little bit sooner than you'd be able to otherwise. And uh, it doesn't save that much time on an individual level basis, but over the course of a run, it saves quite a few seconds. And we're going to try to do a trick here to get over this acorn machine. Nice. Yep, okay. So we just damage boosted over that. And even though we're past that, we are not quite out of the woods yet. Oh. <laughs> uh, but there we go. Nice. We're done with that level now. That was good. So we got the five coins from that. And we're actually going to go straight to Mausoleum 1 because you need to complete the first Mausoleum of the game in order to unlock the DLC aisle. And uh, the Mausoleum is where you first get introduced to Miss Chalice. Uh, but the Mausoleum itself is kind of kind of like an auto-scroller. There's not a whole lot of action going on. So if you do have any donations to read a tea tree, now would be the perfect time. We have probably about a minute, minute and a half or so uh, until the next part of the run. My pleasure. We've got $50 from Anonymous who chipped in to help us get to this run and says 300%. I don't know what that means, but I like it. I am loving it so far myself. Thank you, Anonymous. $50 from Sir Dan 1987 who says the wizards and warriors have assembled for a speedrunning event to defeat the ultimate bad known as cancer. Let's assemble our skills and strengths to defeat cancer. I love where your head's at, Sir Dan. Thank you very much for your generosity. 
Jason LaRose sends in $1,000 and says, $1,000 donation train. Choo choo. Jeez. Thank you. Yes, it is amazing to see the generosity of our wonderful viewers. Thank you so much, everyone. Lord Mikoda sends in $25 to Prevent Cancer Foundation, says, Been watching for so many years, and I love to see things evolve. This community is too amazing, and I can't wait for all the insane spood runs. Keep on kicking it. Let's save the animals and mock the humans. Mm -hmm. Decisive. We'll see what we can do with that for you, Lord Mikoda. Thank you. Zikier seems like they were interested in one of our candle prizes, sending in $5 and saying, Delicious Wumpa candle. Won't eat, honest. Please don't eat any Wumpa or banana candles. Thank you. This is your official PSA on that. <laughs> All right, so we are entering the DLC aisle right now. Just a little background of the story. You meet Miss Chalice. She's a ghost. She wants to become alive again. Uh, she introduces you to a wonderful, nice little chef named Chef Saltbaker. Uh, he gives you something known as the Astral Cookie, which will allow you to play as Miss Chalice on an individual level basis. But the only way for her to become human is for you to collect the ingredients from enemies around the island, uh, the island, so he can make what's known as the Wonder Tart. That's your goal for the DLC Isle. So that is what we're trying to do right now. We're, in the meantime, just collecting some coins. We're going to go into uh, something called the King's Leap right here, which is basically the DLC equivalent of the Running Guns. It's how you obtain coins, and you'll notice very quickly it's chess themed. Uh, you'll play against a bunch of bosses here that are all based off of uh, chess pieces. Up first we have the pawns, and just like in a real game of chess, there are a lot of pawns here. And we will take this one step at a time. Now, it's not really intended for you to be able to go up here, but because of Chalice's movement abilities, we are able to, to just hop right on up here and uh, take out a bunch of pawns at once. You're a little at the mercy of RNG there at the end. And uh, you need some pretty good reaction time for these chess fights because you don't want to get stuck between a rook and a hard place, right? right? <laughs> you can get them all really early in one go, but it's a pretty tall order. Yeah, it's RNG dependent as well. And uh, I, I didn't mention it yet, but you'll notice that we're not firing any weapons. or We're not using our guns at all on these, on these fights, and that's because, you know the old saying goes, you... Um, should never bring a gun to the night fight. <laughs> so that's what we're doing right now. We're fighting the night here. Uh, but, but yeah, you can only use your parry to uh, attack these bosses. And uh, we're just able to take the knight down quickly there. He takes 20 hits. And if you play this as Cuphead, since his parry is a lot different than Miss Chalice's, it often takes a lot more time. I will say, with all those parries, you really knocked out his night light. <laughs> and Tea Tree getting in on it nice. And up next, we have the bishop here. Uh, do you know why bishops only move diagonally in chess? No, why Why do they only move diagonally? Because north, south, east, and west are cardinal dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> you have to parry a lot here in this level. Sometimes it feels like it never comes to an end. <laughs> I think only the, the chess fans are going to understand <laughs> that one. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, so if you haven't noticed already, we have to go... But to, to make this boss vulnerable, we need to uh, put out all these candles. And there we go. Take him out. Down to one HP. It was a little trick, but... Uh, or a little tricky there, but we, we got through it, no problem. And you'll notice after each of these fights, I'm also retrying. Normally there's an animation where you see uh, Mugman collecting the coins, but... We're able to skip that animation and still obtain the coins. Uh, it saves a couple seconds each time. This fight's pretty straightforward, as long as I don't make any rookie mistakes here. <laughs> it's the rook fight. But yeah, uh, because of Miss Chalice's double jump ability, you're able to basically just fly in the air while you parry these. Yeah, Miss Chalice is extremely good at the King's Leap. With the, uh, every time you get a parry, you get a dash reset and a jump reset, and it just is a huge difference, especially in this level. Should be in there. We go. Okay. Oof. And then already coming up, we have the final boss of the King's Leap, which, as you probably guess, it's the Queen, the most powerful boss in chess, and the most powerful boss in the King's Leap here. We have to go fire these little cannons at her. It's actually it is a little bit tricky uh, because she's a little unpredictable. She moves back and forth. Sometimes she stops at random.
you have to dodge his projectiles as well. This one has a really high skill ceiling because it's really hard to aim the, the cannon correctly every time. Yeah, I missed, missed like two or three there, but still, finished it pretty quickly. But okay, that does it for the King's League. We've already collected basically all the coins in the DLC. Uh, we're going to just exit the map really quick here to skip another animation. There is a little puzzle that's coming up here, so we are... Uh, it actually randomizes each time you start the game, so I'm going to have to talk to these guys really quick. Let's see. Up right. Left down. Down right. Up right, left down, down right. Right? So 9, 1, 3. Okay, and I gotta go to the shop really quick and buy a few things here. We're gonna buy the broken relic and we're gonna buy some weapons here. We'll get into the uh, mechanics of the relic later. But yeah, we're gonna do some quick equipment uh, equipping here. Okay. You can luckily menu while Pork Grind is telling you how to equip items, so that saves a little bit of time here. We're going to get a hidden coin that's behind the bakery, and that actually does it for all the coins in the DLC. Now we just have to complete all the bosses. So we're going to go dive down here and fight uh, the secret boss. So we have to interact with these gravestones in the same order of those uh, that those people that we talked to earlier mentioned. And then Bugman's going to take a little nap here, and he has a nightmare. So... We are going to have to fight this, which I believe was actually a cut phase from the original Devil Fight in the base game. If you look up old beta footage for the game, you actually see a fight that's very similar to this. And it, I thought it was really cool they decided to, to bring it back uh, for the DLC. It's actually very difficult. You can only uh, hurt the boss whenever you're facing him. So we're going to uh, try to make quick work of him here. There we go. Nice. Nice and smooth. And doing that fight actually turns the Broken Relic into the Cursed Relic. And the Cursed Relic, as part of completing the game, uh, it adds percentage to your file for you to uncurse the Cursed Relic. And to uncurse the Cursed Relic, you need to do a certain amount of battles with the Cursed Relic equipped, which will give you a bunch of negative effects. Uh, we're not doing any of the battles with the Cursed Relic just yet. But once we do, we'll, we'll uh, explain a little bit further as to what that entails, because it does make some of the fights quite a bit harder. But first, uh, we have the Howling Aces, which are a bunch of uh, aerial dogs right here that we're facing. And uh, they're going to give me a rough time. <laughs> and unfortunately, they have a bone to pick with us. Oh, yeah. All right. That was a pretty good face. Okay. I mean, not that you didn't know, but Chad is absolutely howling right now. <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> Now, this is a really cool mechanic. The The first time I saw this, it really got me. It threw me for a loop here because the game actually uh, physically changes the, the direction that you're that you're facing, and now we're upside down. And uh, when I used, used to do that part, I had to physically turn my head to figure out what's going on. I'm finally used to it now, like, you know, six months later. But, geez, that was a pretty tricky to get used to at first. A really cool game mechanic. Yeah, that was probably the trickiest one for me out of the, the five. Uh... That that like uh, at the beginning yeah. of the DLC. Yeah. And uh, coming up next, the next boss we're gonna be facing is Mortimer Freeze, and uh, I guess there's plenty that we could say about this guy, but I just hope we have a nice fight. <laughs> I guess uh, just got to mention the second phase is pretty scary. You got to make sure it doesn't snowball out of control. <laughs> uh, in my first time playing through the DLC, though, this is definitely the boss uh, that I struggle with the most. I would say. There's uh, definitely a lot of uh, pretty tricky parts of this. A lot of stuff to dodge. Not gonna lie, it really seems like he's got no chill. Yeah, this guy is not chill at all. <laughs> all right, this is where the fight gets a little flaky. Here. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Luckily, this boss himself, the head does not have a hurt box, so you can actually go directly on top of them and shoot these spready X's for massive damage. You're able to finish that fight off pretty quickly. Also, so some of the uh, advantages that Miss Chalice gives for um, a run through of the game, even for the, the base game bosses, she has the double jump, and the double jump lets you hit more of your shots on higher hit boxes. And it, it allows you to set up bigger traps with weapons, like when, when you know that something's going to come on screen. And uh, she also has the the uh, dash and jump resets, and she has an invincibility roll. 
and she has an extra yeah, HP. So there's like cares. a lot of reasons to just get her immediately uh, and use her for the base game if you're forced to get all the content in the game. And uh, hope nobody here has Fifi phobia because we're facing Glumstone the giant. <laughs> yeah, this boss can be a giant problem if you're if you're not careful. <laughs> Yeah, this uh, this first phase is really really tricky actually, because there's just so many things going on and the platform's missing and then um, there's a little there, there's a really cool surprise in store for final phase and uh, there's a really cool glitch that we can do here as well. That's some of you may uh, think it's reminiscent of Donkey Kong Country. You'll see what I mean whenever we get there, assuming I'm able to do it properly. Yeah, it's really cool looking. Okay. We're moving into final phase now. This is definitely one of the hardest fights for, for the DLC. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we set up an infinite uh, dash roll in the air here. That was a little tricky. Uh, but I still have to dodge some projectiles here because if they hit me, it's still fun. Still but, but right now, uh, this boss also does not have a hurtbox on his face. We're able to do this infinite dash roll while shooting while we're over his hitbox, and that just saves us a lot of, uh, just a lot of times that we're able to, to hit consistent damage right there. Nice. And as we beat the giant, we just reached a Brobdingnagian milestone, $100,000 raised for the Prevent wow. Cancer Foundation. Thank you so much to everyone. That's crazy. It's been less than eight hours. That's awesome. Whew. Now, coming up, we have uh, Moonshine Mob. This is just a group of mobster bugs. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I guess... I like to think that this first guy might have uh, got turned to a life of crime prematurely. He might have wanted to be a web designer before he uh, fell in with the wrong crowd. <laughs> it looks like Miss Chalice may have been a pretty good debugger, too, before she started all this. I think this is another fight as well that was uh, originally supposed to be in the, the original game and then ended up getting scrapped a little bit. Wait, really? Uh, That's cool. Time. Yeah, I think that was originally supposed to be like one of the King Dice mini bosses, maybe? But uh, just that second phase right there, and they ended up integrating it into the DLC, which is another really cool thing. I, I do have a... Speaking of anteaters here, since there's an anteater right there, I do have a good anteater joke if you guys want to hear it. Uh, <laughs> So an anteater walks into a bar, and the bartender asks him, can I get you something to drink? And the, bar uh, and the anteater says, no. And then the bartender asks, well, can I get you something to eat? And the anteater again says, no. So then the bartender asks him, what's with the long nose? And he says, I was born with it. <laughs> uh, I'm having too much fun. Uh, but we have, uh, coming up here, Esther Winchester, the one and only plane fight of the DLC. There's quite a few in the base game, uh, but you'll notice the mechanics here are a little bit different. Um, it's, like, it's actually first phase pretty tricky. <laughs> Probably uh, can't talk for a little bit. Uh, you want to go talk about the mechanics a little bit? So yeah, I'm the uh, Miss Chalice has like higher DPS with just her... Uh, her main uh, web, her main shooting, uh, like w without the ex, and w with the ex, it depends on the fight that you're that you're in. But here we have one extra HP. We can damage boost a little bit better. We have the very good just base DPS from the gun she has, and um, using nukes is, is pretty effective. We can go right up, uh, like into the face of this boss and use our HP to just try and damage boost and do as much damage as possible. The and stakes are a little high at this point, yeah, you gotta be careful. Especially with one oh, HP, my oh, Took it nice there. try. That's rough, this is a very rough fight. Uh, especially if you try to do it quickly. I guess I need to move a little faster. <laughs> yeah, Jason gives me a lot of helpful tips for the cow, but unfortunately they seem to go in one ear and out the other. <laughs> nice. We need a nuke here for safety. Every time you use a nuke as well, you get some iframes afterward, which could help you out of a jam if you're just in a, in a situation where you're going to get hit and you happen to have a nuke stored. Definitely is helpful to know, even in casual playthrough. Yeah. Nice. 
Nice. Still at four HP. Very good. Yeah. Playing a little, little safer this time after a little mishap last time with these flying stakes. Taking advantage of the small space between uh, the boss and where these attacks come out. Yeah, when you think of the progression of this fight, this fight's kind of disturbing. <laughs> we started out fighting a, a cow, and now we're fighting just some sausage links here, or some sort of hot dogs, or you know. Well, as long as it's all kosher. <laughs> it does say 100% beef sausages on the little, uh, the little box right there. So, okay, we got all the ingredients. We defeated all the bosses on the DLC aisles. So now it's just a matter of walking back over to Chef Salt Baker, and he'll just make that. Uh, he'll just make that wonder tart from his chalice, and everything will, will be well, right? That's got to be exactly. It. There's probably not going to be any twists or anything, right? I mean, I haven't yes. played the DLC, but I have no reason to expect that anything <laughs> isn't on the level. Yeah, yeah, it'll just be very simple here, and his ingredients, and then his chalice will just be alive again, and no problems. So Chef Saltbaker's not here, but has a uh, little hatch open to this dungeon. And uh, apparently, Chef Saltbaker is evil in a Disney-esque twist. We find out that Chef Saltbaker actually was using the time we were distracted to kidnap uh, Mugman. So now Miss Chalice has to save him. It's actually a very difficult phase. Probably the, the hardest phase, single phase in the DLC is, is yeah, this. Yeah, there's so much on the screen to dodge here, especially on an expert. Okay. All right, moving into this, this phase two right here. Uh, Chef Saltbaker, a little homage to Mario there. He put a little mu he, he put a mushroom inside of his hat, or he ate he ate a mushroom there, and now he's gigantic. Happened so quickly, I didn't even catch that the first couple times I played through this. I do have a, a chef joke, Sublime. Uh, do you have any chef jokes? Um, I have a good one. What is your chef joke? How many chefs does it take to bake a pie? Mm, how many? 3.14. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> uh, that joke was a little underdone. Oh... Yeah, one HP going in the final phase here. I gotta gotta buckle down and concentrate here a little. Bit. You got I gotta this. put my chef's head on. All right, nice. Got the knockout. GG. And that actually does complete the DLC. Now we're going to be leaving the DLC and going back to aisle one, starting the the base game itself. We have probably a good like thirty or forty seconds before the next fight starts. With Tree, if you have any uh, donations that you want to read real quick. Yeah, absolutely. I also want to let you know that the next bonus game incentive is open. Uh, that is Portal at $80,000. We are already well on our way. People are rushing us there like Josh and Caitlin sending in $50 and saying the best part of January is watching GDQ. Love you all. And Ogaron donates $50 to PCF and says happy GDQ week and looking forward to all the runs this week. Fortunate to donate more than usual this year. Good luck, runners. And Sandman, also with $50, who says good luck to all the runners and giving a shout out to the announcers. Thank you so much to all of you. All right. Thank you, guys. Now, up next, uh, these guys are in for a root awakening. <laughs> this is the root pack. We're going to take down this potato right here. And there's actually a secret phase on this boss that we're going to utilize. Normally, you fight the, the onion that starts crying. But apparently, if you just don't shoot the onion at all, or at least don't shoot him for a while, uh, he just goes away. And then the phase is over. Um, we are going to do a little bit of damage here after the secret phase is triggered. And this does make a radish appear out of the ground at the end here, which makes the final phase a little trickier. But the fact that we're able to skip the second phase ends up making the fight a little bit shorter. I just have to say, in terms and of boss design, the carrot really is outstanding in its field. <laughs> nice. These puns are dirty. You guys are too much. I wasn't expecting this. <laughs> I thought I'd be like the only, the only pun thrower in the, in the chat right here. I mean, the category said 300%, so I assumed that meant the amount of puns we had to fit in here. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And now these guys uh, are going to be pretty unhappy when I'm done with them. This is Ribby and Crooks. And on, on Expert, the first phase is a lot more difficult because both of them attack simultaneously as opposed to regular where... Uh, they take turns attacking. 
go try to finish him off as quickly as possible here. I'm not sure why they're so mad. Maybe their car got towed. <laughs> Looks like they're wearing new shoes, though. Are those open toed? <laughs> It's a great run so far, too. Thanks. The gameplay is riveting. Ah. What do you think they're all drinking in the back? Some tall glasses of Coca-Cola? Oh my goodness, I was not ready for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I saw that one coming. Uh. Nice, really dude. Pretty quickly. Luckily, we saved a bunch of HP for the final phase. We could damage boost and shoot some spread EXs there and have that uh, get done pretty quickly. Coming up next, we have uh, Goopy Legrand, which for a lot of people, this might even be your first Cuphead boss that you, that you face, because when you first started the game, you could either go to Root Pack first or go to, go to Goopy Legrand first and... Uh, we're gonna go take care of Goopy now, but now that we have all these DLC items, all these like late game, like uh, Miss Chalice and Charge Shot and Spread, uh, we're gonna get this boss pretty quickly. Yeah, and just to uh, act as the voice of chat for a little bit, uh, you know, you just mentioned it, but a lot of people have been asking why are we Miss Chalice right now, and it's because she has additional abilities that uh, make her yeah, faster through all her... this content. Yep. She has the extra HP, she has uh, a double jump, so you can get to uh, hitboxes uh, easier. She has uh, a jump and dash reset if you get a parry. She's really, really good. And oh, and like the dash roll, like, like the invincible like roll yeah, on yeah. the if ground. Yeah, if you hold down and dash as Miss Chalice, she does a, a dodge roll where you're temporarily invincible while you're doing it. It's really cool. Pretty much the only bad thing is that she takes up a charm slot, but for this run, since we go to the DLC right at the beginning and the, the, the charm for Miss Chalice is free and it's just given to you, it is super optimal to just grab her and uh, she, she would be the strongest like out of all the charms anyways, but it's just very convenient at the beginning of the run. Mm -hmm. And this run's flying by right here. I guess that they say, you know what they say, slime flies when you're having fun. <laughs> We're actually going to equip, this is going to be the first fight where we equip the Cursed Relic. Uh, since we do need to fight some bosses with this to uncurse it. Yeah. And uh, our bosses of choice are going to be the base game plane bosses, plus we'll, we'll face one non-plane boss later. But uh, the Cursed Relic will start you out with one HP in a fight, and will also uh, randomize your weapons whenever you shoot an EX or whenever you, you attempt to swap, swap weapons. Now luckily, the reason we're doing these, these on plane levels is because... Uh, the plane levels themselves are. Uh, Got to dodge a little bit. There's only you only, have two, only have two in, weapons in plane yeah, levels. So, so since the weapon is randomized whenever you stop shooting, since there's only two weapons, uh, you know exactly what weapon you're gonna get. So there are some benefits of using the cursed relic on plane levels, especially since we don't even have the the plane bombs on this file yet. You get them in aisle two. But with the Cursed Relic, you roll uh, randomly through all the weapons in the game, uh, even the ones that you don't own. So um, even though it's a bit scary with, with 1 HP, it's uh, very optimal to go for the plane levels for to upgrade this. Ooh. Nice. And now, it also somewhat randomizes your charms whenever you have the Cursed Relic equipped. So there's a charm called the Parry Ring, which will occasionally give you a... Uh, a heart for parrying. So every once in a while, uh, it, it's pretty infrequent when you first get the cursed relic. But as you start fighting bosses with it, the relic gets gradually less cursed. So you're able to get hearts for parrying things more frequently. There is a little bit of a, a reason to it, but it seems like it's random at, at first. It's just every so often, every so many parries will, will be one that counts toward that. We yeah, were able to complete that boss, and we actually have more HP than when we started because we were able to attain one more HP during the yeah, fight. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I wanted to come up with some good Hildebird puns, but uh, I forgot, and I had a feeling they would have flown over your head. Anyway. Oh my goodness. Alright, and we're actually going to uh, put 
put Miss Chalice back on here uh, to do the second run and gun of the run, Treetop Trouble. We do have to complete all six run and guns throughout the course of this run. So uh, Miss Chalice will allow us to get through these pretty quickly. Her dash roll comes in very handy for getting past these woodpeckers because you can just roll under them instead of having to wait for damage boost through them. And her double jump lets you skip a lot of sections. Um, you can also, if you're in the air long enough, you actually uh, just get a dash reset for free. You don't have to parry anything. Um, so you can stay in the air for a long time with Miss Chalice, and for the um, platforming levels in this game, she is extremely strong. They, they weren't made when uh, she was uh, in the game, and uh, the, I, I think she, her design like excels in those. So it's going to be very, very helpful to, to use her in these. Yeah, especially that mini boss. Like it, it's been known that you can jump over that mini boss to skip it completely, but it's kind of a tight jump whenever you're playing as Cuphead or Mugman. But with Miss Chalice, it's trivially easy just because you can jump higher with the double jump. Sheesh! I thought I would have time for some donations in that level before, before I knew it. You were already leaving. <laughs> and now the final boss of Isle One. We have Kagi Carnation, who I I consider to be one of the most recognizable Cuphead bosses. There were images of this guy even way back when the game was first announced, yeah. long before it was released. So pretty iconic boss. Got some sick dance moves also. Uh, this first phase gets a little a uh, little crazy on on expert though. So we have to make sure we put the pedal to the metal here to get through this section of the fight as quickly as possible. Yeah, an expert, he, uh, he will keep shooting until you do enough damage. So you, you're just going to get a bunch of seeds. It's like a really, really crazy bullet hell if you don't get it under control. Yeah. Right, still 3 HP, so it's pretty comfy. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Looks kind of thorny to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that does it for Isle 1. Uh, we just have to go back. There was an NPC just to the left of this level that was originally blocking a coin, but once you complete all the bosses on the first aisle, you're able to grab that coin. So we're going to go just double back shortly just to go grab that, and then we'll head into Isle 2. You have a short period of time here, maybe like 10 or 20 seconds if you want to get a quick donation in. Absolutely. I have just the one. We have $5,000 from Fangamer who says, Hey, everybody. Fangamer here. We are excited to be back once again as a sponsor for AGDQ 2023. We're ready for another week of nonstop speedruns for a great cause. The Fangamer AGDQ 2023 collection features 10 brand new items along with returning favorites. And the best part is 100% of the profit from GDQ merch sales through the end of AGDQ which supports Prevent Cancer Foundation with donations like this one. You can find the full lineup at fangamer.com slash GDQ. All right, so this boss has uh, quite a bit of RNG to it. There's actually potentially five different mini bosses that she could send out here before you have to fight her, and you only have to fight three of them. So depending on which mini bosses you get, they have different amounts of HP, and, and uh, some of them are more difficult than others. So there is a, a bit of an RNG factor here. Hopefully we don't get the Jawbreaker here. Okay, we didn't. Jawbreaker is just very easy, but very long death animation. Yeah. And now we fight Baroness herself. And we're just gonna stand here and jump a lot and try not to get eaten by her house here. And that was quick. Nice. That fight was uh, short and sweet. <laughs> and we do have a, uh, another run and gun coming up here as well, Funfair Fever, which some of you may hear the music and it's very reminiscent of the athletic theme in Super Mario World. There's definitely some inspiration there. Uh, has one of the best what, it's one of the best music tracks of the game, in my opinion. We'll go to that shortly here, and you'll see what I mean. Using Miss Chalice here again, there's a couple of spots where you can double jump and just stay in the air with your dashes and, and skip some areas. Uh, and it also helps out a lot with the hot dog if you're out of HP at the end. Oh, yeah. A couple, you said? Did you do that on purpose? <laughs> uh, uh -oh. Maybe I'm just hearing puns where they aren't there. What do you say? Time for any donations? Uh, yeah, we, we can squeeze a donation in here. That's fine. Certainly. Amadi 1966 donates $25 to PCF and says, What do you get when you cross a sponge with an electric eel? 
a shock absorber. <laughs> Hopefully this donation battles cancer better than it creates laughs. Thank you for that. But this is available. Yeah, as you see, that end section was uh, incredibly quick, especially with the damage boosting that you can do with the extra HP that Miss Chalice gets. Uh, moving forward here, we have another Cursed Relic right here. We're going to equip the Cursed Relic to fight Wally Warbles. And uh, yeah, like the plane levels, man, they're fast to do with the Cursed Relic, but they are terrifying. Yeah, on Expert, uh, Wally's egg attacks are no joke, and uh, I think it's safe to say they can't be ignored. <laughs> well, hopefully this fight goes exactly as planned. Oh right? my goodness. Okay, we got an extra HP, so we do have a little bit of a breathing room now. The egg attacks take up the back wall on Expert. It's very hard. It's uh, a big difference. Yeah, there's, there's not very, not very, uh, not much space to be safe there. Up to 2 HP now. This is looking pretty good. Oh, yeah. Three, we got 3 HP nice. now, so even better. We do a little pause buffer there because it actually loads the final phase in faster. Not exactly sure why, but uh, yeah, it was sure. discovered a long time ago. <laughs> Pretty cool mechanic. We're gonna take a damage boost here because nice. we can get into position to shoot these uh, those uh, missile EXs there, and they do a lot of damage since uh, Wally has such a, a long hitbox at the end there. Up next, we're going to take what looks like an inefficient route through the island, but it's actually required to get a, a hidden coin from one of the NPCs on this aisle. So we're going to take a shortcut here behind the mountain, and we're going to go face off against Grim Matchstick. Go. But yeah, we have to take uh, take the long route here just so we can double back and get a coin. Now, some of you that, that may know this fight uh, from regular mode will notice one key difference between regular and expert on this fight, and that's that the clouds are moving in the opposite direction, which, in my opinion, makes the first phase much harder since you're getting dragged toward him instead of away from him. <laughs> I wasn't even trying to make a pun there, but are you I heard serious? it after it came out. Yeah, uh, I, I to. thought you were just waiting for me to, to <laughs> notice that one. No. Using spread here can be really tricky. You have to get really close to him, and uh, you can't like uh, just guess what position you need to be in. You need to make sure you're not winging it at all. <laughs> Was the winging it a pun? Dragon step wings? <laughs> I've had tried my best. Okay. <laughs> Hitting uh, like an invisible sure little this... hitbox here. Um, going that transition uh, is still vulnerable, but you have to know where the hitbox is forming. Uh, it's it's a little uh, arbitrary, but if you practice it, you can get some extra damage there. And going in for the damage boost, using uh, Spread EX, where go. your inside of Sprite is extremely strong, and using Miss Chalice's 4 HP there, uh, let's it makes that much comfier. That was, that I just want that fight to, to drag on that long. There yeah. it is. <laughs> I remember from the last time we did this run together that uh, yeah. that damage boost was milliseconds away from from going oh, yeah. the wrong direction on you. That was but... intense. I got it close, that's for sure. <laughs> you almost got toasted. Yeah. Uh, right there, we talked to that guy. He gives you a coin as long as you've had four consecutive parries at some point during the run, which we we basically, once you go through the King's Leap as Ch Miss Chalice, it's basically a given that you get that. You don't even have to consciously do that because you're just juggling parries for that entire fight. I'm going on is this is my my uh, personal favorite running gun, just because it has this really cool upside down mechanic, which we didn't see again until the DLC with that Helling Asics fight. Um, but yeah, I actually switched to Mugman for this level because it makes it a little easier uh, because because of part of Miss Chalice's mechanics, the way that she dash parries, uh, you end up getting a lot of accidental parries and accidentally reversing gravity when you don't want to if you're playing this level as Miss Chalice and trying to go quickly. So yeah. switching back to Cuphead or Mugman for this level makes things go a lot smoother. And it, it seems like it may be avoidable, but it is so frustrating to come through here with Miss Chalice and just get an accidental parry like 20 times in the same level. Yeah. 
every time you get a parry as well, like something that people don't talk about that screen much, is it actually freezes the screen for 10 frames. So that actually makes things go quite a bit slower when you consider that like every six parries, you're just adding an extra second of time. Wait, so being more skillful loses... I, I, I'm going to have to consider yeah, this. Yeah, isn't that, isn't that uh, interesting? This goes against everything I've ever learned. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice a lot, on a lot of fights, we'll actually opt not to get parries at all because not only do they take up time and screen lag, but they also add an extra line to the result screen whenever you're scrolling through. That takes about another like 0.8 seconds or so compared to not getting any parries at all. So even though the parries are helpful... Uh, by the way, sorry, this is a good time for, for donations after I'm done saying this. We're in another mausoleum level. But yeah, basically the parries, if they don't save you more than a second, they're not worth getting. All right, I'm on it. We've got a $50 donation train that's been jetting us towards the portal bonus game. We're at 1500 out of 80000 with donations like Inkjet Fire 911 sending in $50, saying incredible to watch the skill on display, completing Cuphead 300%. Donating to Wall of Cancer once and for all. Incentive goes towards Yakuza Kawami Karaoke. $50 from Salmon Buffao, who says throwing a couple of coins towards this amazing cause. Jason, you're on the big stage now, so don't botanic panic and cause a carnival kerfuffle, or else you'll need to do the bootlegger boogie to avoid high seas hijinks. Best of luck on the run. Much love, Salmon. Salmon, great job, man. <laughs> a lot of thought on that one. Thank you. And we're going to go uh, put the Cursed Relic back on because we're coming up on another plane level to the Jimmy the Great fight. Which I think, just by sheer design, Jimmy the Great's probably my favorite boss in the game just because the, really cool the fight boss. has very cool progression. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a very difficult fight with the Cursed Relic here, so I'm going to concentrate a little bit. It also that. has one of the three secret phases, in the or four now with the DLC. Uh, one of the secret phases in the game, but it is not faster uh, for this run. So um, this we're, we're not going to be doing the secret phase for this. Oh, but oh, oh nice try. That was rough yeah, RNG it's in the very first hard phase. to to do the beginning of the Curse Relic fights. Uh, you only, you start with one HP and you got to be really really careful. I don't know why he's so angry at us. I think we may have rubbed him the wrong way. <laughs> well, I wish the second time we go through this goes a little easier, a little more smoothly here. Okay. We got that, that 2 HP now, we have that cushion. All these pillars are doing uh, additional damage to the boss. The, it's, this damage is carrying over to the next phase, so uh, uh, maximizing the damage on each of these pillars will uh, actually help you out a bit if you can uh, if you can do it. It's not always the easiest, but it, that was a really good job there. Thanks. Yeah, each of those wall pieces, you can destroy them in one bomb, or six mini, uh, six mini plane bullets. So I try to do five mini plane bullets plus a bomb just to maximize the amount of damage you get on those. And then we're able to finish that sarcophagus phase pretty quickly here. This is where you'd normally trigger the secret phase. If you stay as a mini plane for this, you would go right to the final phase. And the final phase is a lot more HP. We're opting to do the fight normally though, because as I mentioned, it, it doesn't really save time doing the fight that way. If, if you're, like, perfect, then sometimes it would. If you were, like, a genius, maybe. <laughs> I'll say, though, he's damaging this boss at an amazing rate. <laughs> <laughs> Getting lots of value out of these EXs in the last phase, because he has a very big yeah. hitbox. And it looks subtle, but there's a lot of small things I'm doing to kind of manipulate where his his eye rings are shooting, so to make it a little bit easier to dodge in that final phase. But uh, yeah, that that fight went pretty smoothly the second time around. Nice. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to go switch back to Miss Chalice now for the next couple fights. Uh, coming up, we have the uh, Beppy the Clown fight, and there will be no clowning around here. This boss is pretty difficult, actually. <laughs> It's definitely no joke. Good day for us. Well now go. Nice. Getting a three cycle there. Uh, sometimes you can you can get a two cycle if you're not careful, or if you could just do it on purpose. But uh, 
doing more damage in the first phase there will actually help Jason get rid of this second phase a bit faster. And it's pretty pretty good to get rid of it fast because um, you have to jump up to hit that hitbox and the train with the dogs is a very scary combo. Yep, okay, we're able to finish oh, nice. that pretty quickly just before the plane gets here. Keeping uh, going in the final phase of 2 HP here. Keeping 2 HP. And here is an example of where, even though Weapon Swap Glitch got patched for this game a long time ago, it's actually really good to, uh, very effective to swap weapons uh, quickly if you have EXs. It's, it requires a specific timing, but uh, even on the current patch, swapping weapons is uh, extremely good, and in some situations it's done a lot. Yeah, mainly during your uh, EX attacks. Normally whenever you shoot an EX attack, you stop shooting your weapon in order to shoot the EX attack, but if you swap weapons, while you're doing an EX attack, like after you press the EX button, it allows you to continue shooting your weapon before the EX comes out. And then vice versa, after the EX comes out, before you start uh, shooting normally again, if you swap again, it'll also allow you to continue shooting weapons. So we do a bunch of very quick swaps during EXs, so we're effectively shooting while we're doing the EX attacks. And that ends up adding up to quite a bit of damage over time. Right. So we're moving on to aisle three. This game's just flying by. Yeah. You really coastered on through. <laughs> If I may, we've got $25 from Aura, who says, At first I was worried Jason was getting mugged, but it seems like he's quite cupable. With all the crafty tricks up his sleeves, I'm the enjoying the most one-sided Cuphead playthrough I've ever teen. Let's keep bringing in the saucer and beat cancer. That was amazing. Hey, Sublime, what do you think this guy's favorite band is? Um, is it uh, the Beatles? Ooh, good, good <laughs> choice. Actually, it's the police, but... Not for the reason you'd think. It's because his favorite singer is Sting. <laughs> uh, I thought it was going to be Beethoven or Beyonce or something. A little Bee Gees? <laughs> I mean, I thought it was going to be the Archies. You remember that song, Sugar, Honey, Honey? Ooh, yeah. That would have been good, too. I was just thinking about how I need to stay alive here. So. <laughs> Probably wise, so you don't get stung. Ooh. If you nice do enough damage, you can actually finish him, uh, finish finish her right before her final phase before she turns to this uh, plane there. But we just missed out on it by one shot. Is really close. Yeah, it's very cool though to uh, to get her before the plane even arrives. Uh, but coming up next, we're actually going to see another unique DLC mechanic that they added here. Uh, so if you circle around in place repeatedly quickly, you summon the game Jimmy. <laughs> and this allows you to uh, double your health at the start of the next level on simple or regular difficulty. But even if you're on expert, it allows you to have double health for running guns. And because of that, um, even though it takes a few seconds to summon the genie, we're able to save a lot of time with damage boosting on this level in particular. You'll see, especially at the very end, where they have uh, a section that's kind of like an auto-scroller, but we can break the auto-scroller section, section by dashing ahead of it. So you'll see what I mean in a little bit, how this uh, extra HP will save us quite a bit of time. Yeah, and combining this with Miss Chalice's extra HP just uh, innately and uh, her double jump and uh, d just her dash reset, it's, it's very, very... Uh, like adding adding all those up makes this much easier, and uh, you can. There's more leeway to take damage. Onto the second uh, rock in this level that's just lying right in the way. <laughs> nice. It's a very effective spot Ooh, to take damage with. Uh, with the lions, and here uh, Jason's at five HP. There's uh, a lot of damage boosting uh, that can be done here to just skip this entire chasing section and just get to the end. Yep, there we go. We saved quite a bit of time there. And this concept's going to be used in the other running gun as well. But there is a uh, th there's a pretty cool skip you can you can get with that that he's going to go for. Yeah, we'll we'll, uh, we'll get into that in a little bit here. Coming up next, we're we're going to do the next two fights with the cursed relic. Uh, everyone's favorite Dr. Cal is coming up here, which is uh, often cited as one of the one of the hardest fights in the game. And we're going to be doing it with the Cursed Relic at 1 HP. So wish us luck here. Yeah, definitely one of the um, critical points of the run is to clutch this out. 
Yeah, I'll tell you, this boss has got a screw loose, that's for sure. <laughs> See, there goes the screws. Just yeah, that nuke almost, high. almost didn't get the nuke. Yeah. Nice going into the final the, in the, uh, the final phase, phase with two HP. Uh, that's really, really good. The, and the, there's going to be a bunch of parries coming, so more potential to just get the health up and uh, make sure that you, you're not losing too much damage to, uh, trying to save your health. Yeah, we got an extra HP now. We're, we're sitting pretty comfortable here. Gonna take some damage boost here. I took it. I took it right before he uses the nuke, unfortunately, which which loses a bit of time since we got iframes that we didn't want there, so we couldn't use our nuke right away. But it's still going smoothly. There we go. Goodbye, Doctor Cal. May you rest in peace. Uh, but the next fight is actually uh, the only fight where we use the Cursed Relic on a non-plane level. And you'll see what we mean about the random the randomization of the weapons, because it ends up being quite tricky to, to get the weapon that you want. I'm going to be cycling through weapons, trying to find at least one of the de more desirable weapons on this fight. Uh, but luckily, we only have two more fights to go in order to uncurse this Relic, uh, fighting these bosses on IL-3, because they, they give you more points toward uncursing the Relic as opposed to earlier bosses. And unfortunately, with the Cursed Relic, there is no way to uh, to cheese this mouse, but uh, Roundabout is a very strong option because there's going to be a lot of naturally just turning around in uh, in this fight, and there's a, it gives you the ability to strafe uh, without changing your weapon because you won't have to dash. Um, but obviously, you want to dash to be careful because you're at 1 HP here. Um, and so getting getting Roundabout is and just keeping it is pretty strong. You, know, you don't know what weapon you're going to get if you EX here to try and boost your damage, and um, so the consistency is very valuable. Oh my goodness, oh. I made a miscalculation there. Yeah, it's very <laughs> hard. Uh, this, this fight can give parries at the beginning, but it doesn't have to. And um, yeah, see, we got fortunate here yeah. this time. We got we get a parry attack right off the bat, so now we have three HP as opposed to last yeah, so, time where we got two bad attacks in a row. So now uh, we're looking a lot a lot better here. Rats, just hoping to get that one first try. <laughs> uh oh, time for some donation puns while we work our way back through. Oh yeah, absolutely. That sounds good. Great. Five dollars from Six Bog, who says this speed runs definitely my cup of tea. Spirit Bear sends in $25 and says, I submitted 10 puns to a writing contest, hoping one would win. Sadly, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The Sound Defense donates $50 to PCF and says, I don't know how Jason defeated that genie boss so fast. It was like magic. And that guy, Harvey, sends in $25. Best of luck to Jason in China. Have a great run. Don't you dare think about shelving these puns. In fact, draw more from your cupboards and stir up some crockers for chat. I'm sure they'll be left shattered with laughter. Much love to all. My donation goes to the portal bonus game, Champagne. Let's all raise a glass to GDQ and have ourselves a grande old time. Just like Goopy. Thanks very much to everyone. Thank you. So one thing you'll notice with the Cursed Relic that I was doing toward the end there is that now the Relic is getting closer to, to being uncursed. It is allowing us to uh, use our parry as the whetstone charm. Uh, somewhat frequently, and that fight was every two or three parries was giving us a whetstone hit, which allows your parry to turn into an axe attack, which does some extra damage. And you'll see that a little bit in the last fight that we're going to be doing with the with the Cursed Relic, which is coming up shortly. Uh, but for this fight, we are going to go to Captain Brinybeard. I got a joke for you, Sublime. What is Captain Brinybeard's favorite letter of the alphabet? Uh, um, is it R? You'd think R, but it's actually the C. <laughs> True, it's a pirate's first love. Well, one of his favorites has to be P because without it, he would be irate. <laughs> True. Oh, this guy does seem pretty irate. <laughs> I, I, say, I think he might be right now.
All right, we're going on the final phase right here. We're going to try it for some uh, cool damage boost right here during this laser here, which you're supposed to dodge uh, by either parrying it or going under it, but we're just going to go get hit, hit by it. Nice. Now we have one more run and gun before the final uh, Curse Relic fight. So this is another example of a level that we're going to be using the Game Genie on to start uh, with double the HP. And you'll see that there's a, a nice little skip that we can do at the end, assuming things go smoothly, uh, which will allow us to save maybe 15 seconds or so. And just for anyone curious that's watching and doesn't know the mechanics of the game, Jamie, you can only use it three times on your first time through the game, and after you complete the game, you can use it as many times as you want. Okay. Luckily, we don't have to use it more than three times for this run. Yeah. Yeah, we only have to use it twice. We don't really have to use it at all, but it's no. only really helpful to use twice. And, and hopefully nothing goes wrong that would cause you to have to do an action replay. That's not really a pun, more of a reference, but I thought it was suitably esoteric. I liked it. Hey, references are fine, you know? All right, here we go. We're going we're gonna to take some damage boost here because we do have a lot of HP, but normally there's a, an auto-scroller here triggered by pairing that octopus, and we are going to skip that completely. Hopefully not die. Yeah, that was I was I was a bit worried. Yeah, that, okay, that went, that worked out. So that saves a lot of time. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah. Uh, normally, if you parry that octopus, you get locked into an auto scroller, and unlike the one that's on Rugged Ridge, you can't just skip it by dashing forward. You're actually locked into the screen, so uh, it helps a lot to just skip that auto scroller part completely. Yeah. All right, and the we are on the last first relic. Yeah, so the the last fight where, you, where he's going to start with 1 HP, and this fight can be really scary. <laughs> There's a lot of really tough uh, patterns, and um, he doesn't have to get a, a parry right away, so it can uh, it can be really tricky sometimes. I'm going to be rounding in some whetstone hits, because now at this stage of the relic, we are getting a whetstone hit every other parry if we want, and they'll just add a little bit of extra damage, but we need to get extremely close, which is very dangerous with 1 HP here. Luckily, we have a little buffer here now. We have 2 HP, but it's a little tricky. I tried my best to incorporate an ocean pun here somehow, but I couldn't find a Pacific way. <laughs> nice. I mean, I got some I got some of my own. I could talk about how uh, Calamari is thick with seven Cs, but uh, I'll just mention that uh, I'm healing pretty good about this fight right now. Did you just say you're eeling good? Yeah. Oh my goodness. As, as you should be, at least unless you get rock. <laughs> All right, here we go. Final phase here. Still down to one HP because we, we did take that hit in that second phase there, but we're going to try to stay close. Interesting thing about this boss, if you're close enough to her, she actually can't hit you with any of her attacks in final phase. You just need to dodge these... Uh, these little spike walls that are at the end. Yeah, so it's a very strong uh, strategy to just stare at the back of her head and just see when the where the spikes are going, and then you can just hold yeah. up or down. You don't need to move left or right anymore. It simplifies the last phase, and that's one of the like most RNG heavy phases casually too. So it's it's extremely. Um, yeah, it can help a lot just on your first. Play yeah, to, to know, to know that, that that's a thing. And now we have the Cursed Relic, uh, is uncursed, it's now the Divine Relic, but we are going to shell that for now. It is pretty cool, it's a cool weapon conceptually, but the power of this Chalice just helps us too much in this run. And uh, you'll see also here on the Sally Stage Play Fight, there's a really cool glitch that we can do, and Ch Miss Chalice makes it significantly easier to do otherwise. Uh, so we're going to go try to trigger it right here. Yeah, this saves a lot of time. So normally there's a secret phase here that if you just lower the, uh, the little angels on the side, the thing in the background falls down and crushes her husband and then sends the, the rest of the fight down a different path. All right, we got it. Nice. But if you trigger the fight, the, the secret phase at the same time as you trigger the fight, the fight's second phase normally, it ends up glitching the fight out and skipping you right to the third phase, which saves you quite a bit of time on uh, just screen transitions because there's a lot of uh, lengthy screen transitions for this fight. Oof. 
Ooh, oh, boy. nice. Thanks. Gonna play us a little safe here. You got this. Nice. All right. GG. Phew. Yeah, so um, playing playing it a bit safe in the last couple of phases, but it's uh, with that skip that he got. It is very fast time. Yeah, it still saved a significant amount. Yeah, of time. I, and I think I played that as best as I could. Yeah, that RNG. Yeah, no time for an encore on that one, but you definitely should take a bow. <laughs> <laughs> and coming up next is a fight that I think I've trained pretty well. Oh for. my goodness, I was gonna say that. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> Victor puns here. But we are not going to suplex this train, despite the fact that it resembles the fan train from Final Fantasy VI quite a bit. Pretty tough uh, first phase uh, with, with those strategies. Yeah. It's really fast, but it's really scary. You don't want to lose like 3 HP there and just start do the rest of the fight on one. Nice. It's going about as good as it could so far. Yeah, it was a comfy two cycle, and then now he's going to do uh, a little bit of damage to each one and see who's attacking. Nice. Nice. That was really good. Yeah, that was a smooth fight. I think ideally, like, if you play this fight perfectly, you can get like a 59 second fight on Expert. I think this is on track for. Mm, not quite that low. Oof. On track, he says. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, we got a, we got a two cycle on the final phase there. You could get a one cycle on that, but I missed one key charge shot earlier on. But that's okay. We're still a 105. It's still really solid. And now we have quite a bit of downtime. We have maybe two or three minutes before the next fight because we have to take care of some end game stuff. We have to pick up a secret coin from Inkwell Owl or from Inkwell Hell, and we have to go back to the shop to go buy all the items, then do Mausoleum Three before we go into the final push of the run here. So if you have uh, any other donations, you have quite a bit of time to read them right now, T-Tree. Certainly. We've got $250 from The Phantom Express, who says, So glad we were able to punch our ticket for this bonus speed run of one of my all-time favorite games. The fact that we've already raised $100,000 really raises my spirit. We're well on track to hitting 200000 Hope you've trained hard to try and defeat me, Jason. You better bring your best funds or you won't have a ghost of a chance. I uh, would that I could have read that just uh, two minutes earlier, but thank you so hey, much for your okay. generosity, Phantom Express. It is absolutely timeless. Thank you. Cyberbot X sends in $25 saying, Been loving this Mugman, I mean Cuphead speedrun, although I am very much going boo earns at the funds. Best of luck <laughs> on the run, putting this to the Void Flush showcase in Cultic later on. We're doing Was that a really a Simpsons reference? <laughs> yes, I do believe so. <laughs> nice. Let's see, while you try to avoid getting hit by football, let's get a quick update on some of our challenges. We are more than halfway to the Cultic Void Flush incentive that uh, Cyberbot X just mentioned, 2,230 out of 4,000. We are three quarters of the way to the Yakuza Kiwami karaoke performance. If you want to hear Baka Mitai, we're going to need uh, another $2,300, but I think that is absolutely nothing for you, chat. I absolutely believe in you. The Super Boss Showcase for Yakuza Kiwami is also active at 3,190, so just about 11% uh, out of the $30,000 goal. And the Portal Bonus Game is warping its way ahead at $2,508. So please keep it up, everyone. Time for a little bit more? Yeah, yeah. we still got uh, maybe another minute or so. Or okay, maybe like no 30, problem. 30 seconds. Problem Patcher donates $50 to the Prevent Cancer Foundation, saying this is a really great Cuphead run, but with all the puns, I have to see it as a glass half full. Thank you to my partner for the joke. We've been having a great time riffing off of the commentary. Good luck on the run. We hear the final boss is a devil of a time. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Bwigade with $25 saying, Bwee, Bwee! Long time watcher, very first time donator. AGDQ has been a way for me to continue to connect with my friends through thick and thin. It has been the light of my life, and I've met friends for life. Super hyped for the Cuphead run. Let's roll those dice. Good luck, Jason, and don't cry over spilt nice. milk from the Bwigade. Thank you. Thank you. 
Uh, now you'll notice I actually uh, am going to play the last two levels here as Mugman. We equipped a charm known as Whetstone, which I, I described a little bit before. It turned your parry into an axe attack. Uh, but now we'll be able to use it for every parry because we're using the actual charm itself rather than the Cursed Relic. And this will help us speed up some of these boss fights. It's going to make them very high risk, but it is going to make it faster. So we got to do what we can, you know? Yeah, he's got to I think be. it's more fitting... <laughs> For, uh, for Mugman or Cuphead themselves to, to be the ones facing off against King Dice and the Devil rather than letting Chalice do the heavy lifting, you know? <laughs> I had to let you... I thought you were going to, like... I thought you were going to go for something there. I, uh... <laughs> um... The, with with one HP less, it's it's also just scary because uh, you can't damage boost as much. He's going to be getting uh, three HP uh, extra no matter what because he has to do every single level here. Um, but uh, it, it's definitely very high risk, high reward to be doing this. And one thing worth noting too is defeating all of King Dice's mini bosses here isn't actually required for three hundred percent on your file. But we like to include it as part of the three hundred percent category because it does fill out your uh, your checklist. So later on, after we complete the run, I'll go back and show the complete checklist with all the King Dice mini bosses filled in, all the levels completed, and all the items and all that, just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. But yeah, you'll see here we're using some whetstone uh, tech here, which allows you to basically parry off of anything. This looks really cool too. Nice. Yeah, we that. that was a really, really fast. Yeah, that fight. was very good. <laughs> yeah, we're really rolling through these, huh? <laughs> yeah. There's some really good puns at the in chat. <laughs> yeah, they're they're definitely chipping in with some good ones. So using the uh, the whetstone um, here to get, jump over this hitbox, it's um, you, you cannot stand there and dodge that or duck it. You have to get out of the way, and so he's doing yeah. extra damage while also uh, making sure he doesn't need to to move or stop shooting. It's very very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that cigar just got smoked, huh? <laughs> I, I guess I like him better than the poker chips. It all, he always had a chip on his shoulder. <laughs> this fight's really fun to do with the last thing. A lot of, uh, a lot of jumping and dodging here. Nice. Nice. Okay. Using charge in conjunction with the the um, whetstone is is extremely good. Yeah, it's a very efficient combo to use because while you're flying around setting up whetstone hits, you can be charging your charge shots and then shooting the boss with them whenever you uh, whenever you get day charged. I mean, you really didn't seem to have much problem there. Would you say that Domino was a pushover? <laughs> yes. See, I was trying to think of puns for, for this rabbit, but none of them were very bunny. <laughs> I'm sure you could pull one out of the hat if you tried. <laughs> oh, man. There we go. Nice. Things are looking pretty dicey there for a moment, huh? <laughs> this is actually kind of a, a tough stretch of mini bosses because you'll see um, the number nine has a heart above it, and it could have been over to the number seven or number eight. So that's where we'll get our, our bonus HP. But it's in the farthest. It's in the last mini boss. So we'll we'll have only three HP to deal with till we get there. And these are some of the hardest fights of the run. Oh boy. That's close. This, yeah, this one's really tough. You gotta make sure you're not horsing around. <laughs> I'd make some jokes about odds making, but I bet no one would get them. <laughs> I, 
Yeah, now I'm not sure. Like every time you guys talk, I'm not sure if you guys are making puns that that are flying over my head or, or if you're just talking. <laughs> yeah, That's how I know listening it's really run. careful now. Yeah, I'm, like dissecting everything everyone's saying. Like, oh man, I'm missing out on jokes. Uh, this fight is actually pretty difficult. Yeah. You need to construct here a little bit. Yeah, doing this on on experts uh, with. Uh, Cuphead, or without Smoke Dash, just with Cuphead or Mugman, is very, very hard. There's a lot of projectiles um, with the the rain that she does, and you don't have much time to, to get away sometimes. And there's also some really, really tricky uh, patterns that, that can... That in one, for example, you it's better to walk than it is to dash, and it can just be really, really hard to deal with. Can you see what boss is coming next, Sublime? Um, the, is it is it the eight ball? Are you able to see the future? Yes, you can see the future. <laughs> Are you sure you shouldn't just ask again later? Oh wait, never mind. That is probably the, the easiest of the King Dice mini bosses there. I think it has the lowest HP of the bosses. And it, it's another one of those bosses where they don't have a hurt box. On, uh, so you're free to like bounce into them as much as you want. And you, you'll only get hit by the, the other things on screen. Uh, this boss is kind of infamous, the monkey. It's been kind of an infamous boss since the legacy version of the game. Uh, but I'm going to try to beat this one as quickly as possible. Uh, I, need, I do need to try. It's a matching game here, so i got to concentrate a little bit. Right. There is um, a, a small skip he's going to be going for here at where he can kill the monkey before um, the, matching the last card. And uh, it can be uh, some, sometimes pretty tight to get, but uh, he's going to try his best here. It definitely saves a little bit of time. And, and yeah. uh, this is one of the... One of the levels where, like, you really have to pay attention at, at the beginning because it shows you all, where all the matches are right at the beginning, and then it turns them away. So you only have like a, a moment to, to look. Um, but there are twelve boards on experts, so you can potentially memorize them if you uh, like study uh, which which boards are are which and recognize them early enough. All right, here comes the nuke. Oh yes, nice, dude. I got the early kill there with that. If you time your nuke just correctly, uh, usually they they become he becomes invulnerable again at certain damage thresholds. But if you over damage right on the second to last card flip, you could actually finish him without flipping all the cards. Which is a neat little trick. It's going into the last tight. part. You, you're saying you showed us a card trick. Yes, Very good. I showed you guys a card trick. There we go. It's a good fight. Nice. <laughs> All right, and on to the final part of the run. That's a 539. That's ridiculous. That's a, that's a very, very good time for the King Dice Gauntlet here. Getting the star skip as well. Make this a very mm -hmm. fast uh, L. So coming up here, uh, so we've gone through, we've collected all the soul contracts, and... Uh, should we say yes to the devil? Should we agree to him? Should we give him back all the soul contracts mm. and join him? Which one gets no. us closer to 300%? <laughs> Saying no. I always say no to the devil, kids. And by the way, whoever's working the time, whenever we see knockout on this level, is going to be the, uh, the run here. And uh, yeah, we're using the webstone attack with this fight as well, because it just helps speed things along a little bit, since you're able to do that extra damage with the parries while... While you're fighting him here, it also lets you get in uh, a full spread EX uh, inside of his head, so that's very, very good. Yeah. Sure about the so before the devil, before he opened up his uh, casino, did he actually used to have his own YouTube account? No, it got demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. I want to HP here. Gotta be a little careful. The wet stones are very effective with that on the eyes. Oof! Touch, dude. Ooh, nice, time. beautiful. <laughs> that was very good. That was some really, Did really you? tough dodges at the end. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Oh boy, one minute flat on the double. Now, uh, 
don't go anywhere yet, guys. I'm going to just uh, go through, back, load back into the file, and just show you guys what a completed file looks like, just for the all people out there that are curious to see the, to make sure that we actually did get 300%. Uh, but yeah, the, the end of the game here, we destroy all the soul contracts, we rescue all the residents of Inkwell Isle, everyone's happy, they rejoice, cup at a mug man, and then they're all out of trouble. And that's the end. So uh, that was Cuphead. That was 300%, everyone. Uh, like I said, we're going to go just get back into it right here. Uh, while we're loading back in, I just wanted to give a huge shout out to the Cuphead speedrunning community. If you guys like this run, you enjoy Cuphead, definitely uh, join the Discord. If you go to um, speedrun.com slash Cuphead, click the Discord link. We would love to have new people there. Uh, definitely want to give a huge shout out to the GDQ staff for putting up with uh, my tech troubles that I've had in the weeks leading up to this, and also just for selecting me to, to run such a wonderful game in front of so many people here. And uh, so here's the completed file. We have all the weapons unlocked. Uh, we have all three super arts, although we didn't use any of them throughout the run. We have all the charms, including the Divine Relic, and the checklist is all complete. Everything, including all the King Dice mini bosses, are done here, all the DLC. That's, that's the game. Nice. That's that was everything. a really good run, dude. Good job. Thanks. And I also want to give a huge shout out as well to Sublime for joining me on commentary, and especially because it is so late his time. He's over in Europe. What time is it now, Sublime? It's, it's like it's, 3 uh, 2 45 right? here in the <laughs> Netherlands. But uh, yeah, do you have any, uh, any last words? Uh, anything, just uh, anyone, thank uh, you to everyone who is watching and to everyone who donated. Uh, it was an honor to be able to commentate for GDQ. Uh, and if you're looking to do speedruns, challenge runs, or you just want to find a community of players for this game, uh, the speedrunning and hitless communities are both very helpful and welcoming. And you can find links to the Discord servers of those communities on the Cuphead section of speedrun.com and Team Hitless. And I hope you enjoyed the run and thank you all so much for being part of the event. Yeah, thanks for having us. So I guess we'll send it back to a tea tree, and I believe the next game coming up is Donkey Kong Country 3, which I'm very excited to watch. That's one of my favorite games of my childhood. So thank you, everyone, for having us. Thank you. That truly was a great bounce and then some. Thanks very much, Jason2890, for the run of Cuphead 300%. I think that's about how much I would say I enjoyed that one. While we are preparing for our next run, we've got uh, one donation that I would like to highlight. In particular, it is $5 from Wolfadex, who says, More puns, please! And that might have been intended for the Cuphead run, but if you want to monkey around with some Donkey Kong puns, I wouldn't say no. We've also got $10 from Porkback Fat, who says, I've lost multiple family members to cancer and a friend who survived breast cancer. I adore the Prevent Cancer Foundation and am proud to add to the donation pool. Thank you so much, AGDQ staff, runners, and viewers like you. Dad joke time. A kid tells their dad that they're cold. The dad then tells the kid to go stand in the corner. The kid asks the dad why, and dad responds, because it's 90 degrees. I'll see myself out. Thank you, Pork Pack Fat. And on that note, we will be right back in just a moment.
Welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 Online. My name is Atitri, Tree, and it's my sincere pleasure to be with you right now. I just want to give you an update on some of our incentives by way of a couple of generous donations. Seymour the Llama donated $10 to the Prevent Cancer Foundation and says, Gotta help to make Yakuza karaoke happen. Hearing Kiryu sing Bakamitai longingly is unmissable. That is a Dame Dene moment, my friend. I completely agree with you. Thank you so much. And Piano sends in $10 and says, Since I just finished Yakuza Kiwami for the first time this month, I thought it would be appropriate to donate to the Super Boss Showcase. And as Kiryu would say, Nani? Thank you both. To give you an update on where we're at on those, we are at 8,300 out of 10,000 for the Bakamitai performance. And we are at about 13%, 3,270 out of 30,000 on the Super Boss Showcase. You're making great time. I know you will get us there. We've got a couple of messages from our wonderful partners who help make this event possible. People like Fangamer, a video game merchandise company who you may know, I certainly do well. They have uh, official collections for games like Hades, Celeste, Shin Megami Tensei Nocturne. And as part of ongoing expansions, they are able to ship worldwide with their collection of merchandise for all of those games and their Games Done Quick lineup. As soon as I'm done hosting uh, for the evening for me, I'm going to go over to fangamer.com slash GDQ and have a look. And uh, rest assured that sales of GDQ merch benefits the Prevent Cancer Foundation. So shop with ease and pleasure knowing that you are supporting a great cause. And hey, keep in mind, speedrunning and GDQ isn't limited to just AGDQ and SGDQ. You can watch GDQ every weekday night at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern here on Games Done Quick with the Hot Fix. We have 22 different shows with specials on the weekend. For more information, go to gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix. Hotfix shows off communities and speedrunnings that are sometimes overlooked during marathons and elevates speedrunners year-round. We have shows for all interests, including ones that can help you find new games, teach you how to speedrun, and shows focused on more niche parts of speedrunning like randomizers. We also have special events. Some of our shows are, on every other Tuesday, Random Number Generation and Aimbot, showing off games with RNG sections and FPS games. So feel free to tune in, give us that Twitch Prime subscription if you have it available to support uh, our events. During January, that will go to help defray costs for Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 online, things like the hotel cancellation. But if you stay subscribed during Hotfix events, that helps support ongoing uh, GDQ operations. Now I hear we've got three tickets to one of the funkiest destinations in the Northern Cremosphere. So in just a little bit, we'll be heading off to our DKC3 Any% percent race. But until that time, I am happy to be here with you to read more donations. $15 from Quivico, who says, Glad to be able to watch another AGDQ, and thanks to Mike Uyama and all the staff for putting the event on. Thank you, Quivico, and thank you to Mike and everyone working behind the scenes. We have a $200 anonymous donation with no comment, but whose generosity speaks volumes. And $200 from Yuhu, who simply says, Hype! $300 from Nuclear Cheese, with no donation comment. But again, it means the world to all of us and to the Prevent Cancer Foundation. $25 from Sarah Caesar, who simply says, less than three. And $50 donated to the Prevent Cancer Foundation from Tyler1496, who says, excited for another awesome GDQ event. Here's to all the runners, volunteers, and event organizers working to raise money in support of the Prevent Cancer Foundation.
while we have a minute, I'd love to highlight one of the other upcoming events that GDQ and associated friends have going on, and that is Frame Fatales. Mark your calendars. Frost Fatales 2023, GDQ's next all-women charity speedrunning event, is coming up on February 26th through March 4th. The Frame Fatales community will be raising money for charity and spotlighting the talented women in speedrunning. For more information about Frame Fatales, go to gamesdonequick.com slash frame fatales or do exclamation point FF in the chat. And if you are a woman interested in joining the FF community, DM at Frame Fatales on Twitter or head over to the website. Coming up next, we have an interview for a game coming up later tonight. It is a Pokemon game, which I know everyone loves, but it also touches on one of my loves as a mystery dungeon game. It's Pokemon Mystery. Hello, AGDQ 2023 online. It's Keys around again. I'm sure you're sick of seeing me at this point in time. I'm joined by Epic Yoshi Master, the runner of the upcoming PMD run. Yoshi, how you been? It's It's been a few months. Yeah, it has. I'm doing really well. I'm really nervous, but I'm super, super excited to showcase this run tonight. Well, that's good to hear. Um, I'm going to ask you the most standard question awesome. possible. Uh, I never asked you in person either. Like Usually I do, so I'm, I'm surprised I didn't. So what actually made you pick up speedrunning? Okay, so I think I saw one of the GDQs back in maybe 2015 or 2016. And I didn't really start until 2018. Back in tw January of 2018, I started with a hat in time. And that one really kept me in, and I've, I've stayed with the hobby ever since. That's awesome. Um, so Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. That is probably the Pokemon series that I have the least amount of experience in. So I'm actually entirely clueless on this run. So you want to give us a little bit of a preview of how this is going Absolutely. to go? Absolutely. So Randomizer 10 Dungeon Blitz is probably the least known category of all time, unless you're familiar with the community. It's like this very niche thing that became a, pretty much a big deal. Mystery Dungeon in general is a really awesome series. So the run that we're doing is a randomizer, but it's not like in your traditional randomizer sense. You don't have like checks or anything. We mess with the game that we're mm -hmm. playing. So for example, uh, the starters we have are random. The items we find in dungeons are random. Uh, even the way the dungeons themselves are generated is random, which I think is really, really cool. Well, you sounded excited when you talked about the generation of the dungeons. So you, take it Absolutely. away. Absolutely. Okay. So it's more of... <laughs> I can hear the joy in your voice. <laughs> it's more of a subtle thing because you could totally play this randomizer and not pay attention to this at all and still get through it just fine. But one of the really cool details of this run is that there's basically an element of algorithm recognition. There's all of these different patterns for like ways the dungeons can be generated. For example, there's a pattern for probably one of the most hated layouts of all times called Crossroads. Strife in the run is going to disagree with me and say it's a ladder layout. It's basically you have <laughs> rooms on all of the outer circle, except for the corners, and then a bunch of hallways in the middle. You've got a ton of layouts like that. For example, there's a plus layout, which is just like five rooms in a plus shape. You've got some that are like a horizontal line. And recognizing all of these different layouts is a really good skill to have in your tool set as a PMD runner. I, I honestly didn't realize that there are that many possible layouts. I knew that you know stuff was like generated, but I, I didn't realize that it went to this kind of detail. Um, what is probably the biggest difference in terms of approach for a run like this compared to just doing a vanilla run of PMD? So the randomizer portion is what... So the layout generation part that I talked about, so for a vanilla run, all of the layout types would be fixed. So obviously the dungeons are still random, but like the type of pattern that you'll see for a particular floor is always going to be the same. For randomizer run, all of the algorithm settings are totally randomized which, you know, fits the name, but it makes, it makes it fun because it's all about identification. Like, you get into a floor, and in that split second, you can try and figure out what type of algorithm am I in right at this moment, and what is this floor going to look like? So what is probably the scariest thing that you can experience in your run tonight? Well, 
It depends because it's really the fear of the unknown. You never know what you're going to get into until you get into a new run. Um, usually the scary thing is going to be something has a one hit KO move out of nowhere. Okay. But we try to mitigate that by having a lot of safety items. Uh, like the item generation is really about giving a lot of variation and strategy and like ways you can like fix a problem if you run into something. It's all about having options. Well, cool. I look forward to seeing the run. Anyone who's curious in chat on when the run's going to be, it's in a, a little under three hours from now. It's uh, it's listed at 11.44 p.m. Eastern right now, but you never know with schedules. But thanks so much, Yoshi, for taking the time to talk with me. It's always a treat to talk. And good luck on your Thank run. Thank you. We'll see you all later, everyone. Bye. Thank you so much for that, Keys and Yoshi Master. I am absolutely looking forward to that. Uh, it's it, in case it didn't come across before. I absolutely love mystery dungeon style games. Things like um, uh, what is it? Um, the the Tower of Fate uh, is one that some of you may know that came out on Vita some years ago and reemerged on Steam a little bit back. But uh, yeah, I I will absolutely stay up a little bit past my bedtime on a Monday morning to watch that. Let's see where we're at right now. We are at $115,573. And as Keith said, that Pokemon Mystery Dungeon run starts in just a couple of hours. What do you think, chat? Can we get up to $150,000 by the time that run is through? I think we can. Especially if we have the support of folks like Corduroy, who donates $25 and says, Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky is one of my favorite games ever, and I'm beyond thrilled to see it represented later tonight. I might have to pull up my DS Lite and play it again soon. And Umbra Witcher, who sends in $50 to the Prevent Cancer Foundation, saying, love that Cuphead run, and have DKC3 and Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes coming up. Thanks for running this event again. It is our sincere pleasure, and thank you very much for your generosity. Virxel sends in $25, simply saying, Oh, banana. Hmm. Always a pleasure to be able to do that. Thank you very much. And $50 from Bruno Fightmaster, who says, AGDQ, the best time of the year. That Cuphead run was amazing, and I bet it's only going to get better from here. Put this towards some dulcet tones from Kiryu and Bakamitai. We will certainly do that for you. Thank you so much. As we're getting our DKC3 flight off the ground, let's talk a little bit about the prizes that are available right now. You heard me say, oh, banana, just a moment ago. And that is one of our prizes, a banana scented candle With, from Retro Flame, who also provided a wumpa fruit earlier in the marathon. That is a $5 minimum donation. If you liked the Cuphead run, we have several different prizes from the Calamaria boss fight. An acrylic painting from KP Art at a $15 minimum donation. And an actual stone. A stone painting of Cuphead versus Calamaria from Painting Rocks by Luz. That one is a $20 minimum donation. And there are, of course, also our grand prize donations. There are uh, three of them that I'm looking at right now. A Fallout AER-9 laser rifle, which I believe is the one from the Fallout 4 era, which has the underbarrel stock, so you could get a, a nice proper grip on it from Vulpin Props and Cute Monster Props for a $200 cumulative donation total throughout the marathon. A Skytech Gaming Azure Gaming PC. Uh, as somebody who works in IT for a living, I can tell you that a 600K 10-core processor and an RTX 3060 Ti with 16 gigs of RAM will do you very well for 1080p gaming at high refresh rates or 1440p 60. And uh, if none of that means anything to you, just know that it is a great gaming PC. Uh, and that will be uh, at another $200 cumulative total donation from you throughout the marathon across the entire week. So if you are looking to get your game on and that is something you can do uh, it, it is a great opportunity. And of course, heroic replicas coming through once again 
with the Hylian Shield and a choice of additional replica item. Everything from the Legend of Zelda Master Sword, a Zora electric guitar or bass, Sly Cooper's Cane, the Ancient Sword from Shadow of the Colossus, Lucina's, Lucina's Falcon from Fire Emblem, the Megaton Hammer from Ocarina of Time, the Gilded Sword from Majora's Mask, the Goddess Sword from Skyward Sword, the Link to the Past Master Sword, the Chris Sword from the Zelda animated series, if you really want to get out there with it, I love it, the Sword of Omens from Thundercats, the Sword of Power from He-Man, the Buster Sword, that includes five socketable Materia Orbs, if you can carry that much, and the Satisfactory Xeno Basher, that is the Hylian Shield and any one of those 15 items as your second prize for a $200 cumulative donation. We have a lot of bid wars open and active for our Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Sky run coming up. Name the lead Pokemon. Currently showing uh, lead donations at Mr. Rogers at $848, Beans at $670, and a little bit further behind, Arvin and Skittles at $190 and $85. But absolutely nothing has been decided yet on that one, nor for the partner Pokemon. Dad at $589.50, Martin at $185, and Chat, you yourselves are in the running to be the partner Pokemon at $176. We've got people absolutely showing their love for the games, for the prizes. $25 donated from Weasel with the comment, The Shaman plushie was so cute, my son insisted we donate. So here's the first for the marathon. Thank you so much. $10 from Hydro Pump, who says, Cancer? That's bananas. Here's a donation with no monkey business involved. Oh, I appreciate that. That is a very big move from you. And we appreciate it. Now, Cedar is getting controversial. $15 from them, who says, Just so you all know, the best animal is the cheetah. There is no debate. I'm uh, not sure what to make of that, but we appreciate your generosity. Thank you very much. Bag of Soup is helping us move towards the Portal bonus game with $25, saying 25 towards Portal. Short, sweet, and to the point. Thank you very much for your donation. I think this one might be left over from Cuphead. Pete the Panda donates $25 and literally writes, Adlib an old-timey trumpet solo here. I'm uh, afraid I may not have my spit valve ready for me, but thank you so much for your generosity and for a good laugh. $5 from Huge Lag, who tells us that Pokemon Mystery Dungeon is a series that's close to my heart. I'm looking forward to seeing the randomizer. P.S. My favorite Pokemon is Maractus. That's a good choice. Can't say no to that. AGDQ 2023 online would not be possible without the help of a lot of amazing partners, including, but not limited to, Humble Bundle. Their monthly membership and Level Up and Learn communication and meditation game bundles are preventing the prevent... benefiting. Excuse me, the exact opposite. They're benefiting the Prevent Cancer Foundation for the month of January. Be sure to check them out at HumbleBundle.com. Humble Bundle's January Choice membership includes Doom Eternal and Tribes of Midgard. If you like Doom Runs, hmm, you absolutely should get in on that. And check out uh, Aimbot, like I mentioned earlier, with the uh, Emerlin and friends running a lot of great FPS games.
You know, I've talked about our sponsors, I've talked about our donators, and your incredible generosity from all of you, uh, every group I've mentioned. But most important, I would say, is the charity that we're raising money for today and this week, and that is the Prevent Cancer Foundation. Founded in 1985, the Prevent Cancer Foundation is a U.S.-based nonprofit organization. Their mission is to save lives across all populations through cancer prevention and early detection by focusing their work through research, education, outreach, and advocacy. Their vision is to stop cancer before it starts. You can find out more information about PCF at preventcancer.org. A little voice in my ear has told me to check the incentives, and that shows me that we are 90% of the way to the Yakuza Kiwami karaoke performance. 9042 out of $10,000, chat. Keep it up. I am impressed. I'm not surprised, but I am impressed. Now, chat, I know it kind of looks like the Kremlings have gotten into the system, but please know that the tech crew is working on it. They are doing a fantastic job. I've been getting updates. We're going to be good to go just as soon as we can be. So while we wait on that, I would love to read out more donations from you generous, cute chatters. $50 from Lady Harmon, who says, Ah, it's Christmas morning, circa late 90s, and you and your siblings are crowded around the TV playing DKC3 which you just received that morning from Santa. Those were the good old days. Now, 20-ish years later, watching someone else destroy the game you could barely play at six years old. Love GDQ and go runners. Yep, we absolutely have that to look forward to in just a few minutes. Rystar2 has sent in $25 and says, Shout out to the marble with the screaming calling inside. Ah, I love it. We, we love our... Uh, our our mixed metaphor jokes, don't we? <laughs> it's just so absurd I couldn't help but laugh. Autumn has a pun time ready uh, a pun yeah, a pun time ready for us. The five dollar donation comment reads pun time, pun time. How do you kill a circus? You go for the juggler. <laughs> amazing schedule this year. Good luck, runners. You're amazing. Ravenan with a $50 haiku donation. A haiku. Donkey Kong, go forth. Gorilla, like banana. Quoth. Oh, banana. Truly, sage words of wisdom to reflect on. Thank you very much. April has sent us $20 and says, I'm so happy I can finally donate this year. Lots of love to AGDQ and Prevent Cancer Foundation. Right back at you, April. Thank you.
the friendly voices in my ear and on my TV screen say that while the SSX Extra course was met a while ago, thanks to your generosity, and we'll be looking forward to seeing that wide white field of the uncharted bonus track, if I recall properly what that's called, we do also have a character choice incentive that is almost tied up right now. Zoe is currently out at front at $125, but Kauri is right behind at $112, and then Mac and Elise at $35 and $25, respectively. So if you want to see your favorite shredder hit the slopes, then now is a perfect time to get those donations in. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for bearing with us. I hear it is time for a race, a chase, a bramblin' scramble to stop the chaos of the Kremlings in a three-way any percent race of Donkey Kong Country 3 with Laugh, Chafe, and Blue Pen 49. Let's do it. <laughs> 